the second game because after that I was like wow this is insane so I mean what if, so I put like a bowl out talking about our oh, level done in the title race and most of you said yeah um, and then you know I thought okay Arsenal Villa now Arsenal probably gonna get the job done although you know I had a feeling in Villa Villa are a great side they do well against Arsenal before maybe a draw potentially I did not think Liverpool Sorry, Arsenal would lose 2-0 to Villa And both teams would lose on the same day at home That was crazy That, that was crazy um, And yeah, Leon Bailey and Ollie Watkins 84th minute, 87th minute I'll do the same thing here Let's talk about Villa first Because Villa, wow, absolutely wow Great performance by them Great, great performance by them Look, first off, they were not the best they weren't the best. Um, I thought Arsenal had a lot of chances. In that first half, Villa didn't really offer too much, although they had their moments on the break, you know. Ollie Watkins hit the post in my first half. They looked dangerous. But second half, a fantastic full credit to Unai Emery, because second half they came out and they were by far the better team. They were miles better than Arsenal, in my opinion, in that second half. And they looked fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And, you know, the momentum had swung. They kept pushing, pushing. And then it was only a matter of time before Leon Bailey got that goal to go 1 0 up. And then Ollie Watkins, I mean, what a fantastic goal that was. The composure, the finish from him in that goal is superb, absolutely superb. And, um, yeah, 2 0 away win at Arsenal, especially sweet for Emmy Martinez, who absolutely fantastic as well um, made some great saves at his former club and of course Unai Emery of course Unai Emery returning to Arsenal and uh, picking up a victory they've done the league double over Arsenal now which is pretty crazy um, but yeah Unai Emery haunting Arsenal once again I mean he loves playing against them and we got a lot better that's a league double this time when he was back at Villarreal they knocked him out in the Europa League yeah, he loves it, and this is big for Villa, who uh, is big for their top four race as well, which is very, very vital, and again, I think we'll, we'll touch on that later a little bit, um, but this is massive, and by the way, I mean, they have a great record in London, but they beat Arsenal away, they beat Chelsea away, they beat Spurs away, uh, yeah, fantastic, but uh, for some reason, love it, they love playing in London away, as for Arsenal, as for Arsenal, well, well, well. I thought, you know, at Liverpool, they messed up the league, and then Arsenal go and do this. And I think Arsenal have also messed up the league. Both teams, in my opinion, have messed up the league in the space of one day. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of a little bit of a similar story. Uh, Arsenal just couldn't put their chance away. They had 18 shots, four on target, no goals. As I said, I mean, that was mainly in the first half, second half, we had some as well, but second half, I thought they were just outplayed by Villa, in my opinion. Um, Trossard, Trossard had the biggest chance, he should have scored that, in my opinion, but it was a fantastic save by Emmy Martinez. I also thought, I thought that um, Miguel Arteta, I understood why, I understood why, but I thought he messed up with the team selection, he rested a couple players, you know, he took Havertz into that midfield role, Jesus went up front, just didn't work, didn't work, he put Zinchenko in, Zinchenko was really poor in this game, Jesus really poor in this game, Havertz was not good in the midfield role, he was far better, he's far better in the number 9 role for Arsenal, I think he was doing that, you know, to keep it fresh, because they got Bayern coming up, they already played midweek, but at the end of the day, when you're in a title race like this, you've got to strength you have to you can't be looking ahead to games you can't be looking backwards to games um and you know this midfield is in my opinion it was way too like attacking i thought um that having Jorginho in there would have just made a bit of control in the game um and would have been much better for them um, and you did see when he came on he put in some nice passes and that but yeah i thought he messed up there and Arsenal, I mean, is it done for them? Is it done? And here's the thing. My 
said with Liverpool, I didn't really think it's a bottling thing, I don't think it's a mentality thing with them, but I said Oldham Park is just a lack of talent in terms of they've been missing chances all year. With Arsenal, you can't really say the same. With Arsenal, you can't say the same. This team is ready, if you like, in terms of ability. They've proven it. Last year, they were very close to a title. This year, again, very close to a title. That's two years in a row now where they've been so close to a title. And so we have the sample size there. It's not like Liverpool, where last year they were bad and they've just come out of nowhere, really, and compete for a title. No, two years in a row now they've been the top two teams in the Premier League. So this team, ability-wise, coaching-wise, is fair. So what's missing, what's missing is that mentality, is that experience factor, is that somebody, in my opinion, who's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck in a game like this where second half, Arsenal are not playing well, is a big title game, your title rivals have just dropped points. It's going to take somebody to get that ball and say, I'm going to win us the league title. And I looked on my pitch and no one did it. You know, Saka, great player. He's young, though. Not that guy. Trossard, not that guy. Jesus, not that guy. Havertz, not that guy. Rice, not that guy. Odegaard, not that guy. At the end of the day, that's the one thing that's missing from Arsenal. Because as I said, two years in a row now, they've been the top two teams in the league. So what's the issue? How are they not getting over the line? Why do they keep? crunch times of the season dropping points like this losing big games is a mentality thing it is they don't have anybody in this side who has been there who has done that besides the Sinchenko Jesus and in these two players yeah sure they've won league titles and that but the, they weren't important players they never really did anything clutch for them and they're not like one of the best players at the Arsenal side so yeah that's the main problem with me with this Arsenal side, um, yeah, which is really disappointing, really, really disappointing. Now, in terms of the title, in terms of the title, now look, I'm speaking very negative, but at the end of the day, there are only two points, both teams away from the top, so you might be thinking, like, I'm being a bit hyperbolic here, but, but the way I see it is, sure, Mathematically, Arsenal and Liverpool, of course, are in it. Of course, they're still in this title race. They are. No, they're two points away. Arsenal have better goal difference than Man City. Man City drop points one day. For if these two win, boom, you're in it. Of course, if they can still win this league, there's no doubt about that. But will they? Will they actually do it? In my opinion, both of them, no. No. Because the thing is with Man City, I'm... My belief was that Man City were going to win this all the time. I, I believe that Man City, you know, were going to do it. But the only way Man City were not going to do it is if they were chasing and chasing and chasing the whole time. Once Man City, when it's in this stage of the season, with just eight, six games left of the season, once Man City get the lead, once Man City are on top, they don't relinquish it, ever, ever, at least on the pep. Once they're in this position, with six games to go, and they're top of the league, mathematically, and they can win every game, and they win the league, they do it. That's what they do. So, the fact that they are now in the lead, not only that, they have a buffer of two points. So even if they drew a game, I mean, with goal difference, maybe not, but even if they did draw a game, there's a good chance they're staying top of the league. I don't see it. I think Man City now are going to be licking their lips. I mean, I mean, imagine being Pep Guardiola today. Imagine being him. Both of your title rivals lose at home and you go top of the league. Insane. And it seems like Arsenal and Liverpool are now sort of, I guess, not, not declining, but their peak has gone from this season, you know, performances are getting worse by them, even in their, <coughs> I mean, to be fair, Brian was a good one, but Luke, um, that was not a great performance by them, that Bayern Munich performance was not great, draw against Massey, 
was okay. Lose. Liverpool. Lose versus Palace. Lose versus Southern London. Draw versus United. Scrape past Sheffield. Even Brighton. Scrape past. Both these teams are not in... They've been in better stages this season. Whereas Man City, I believe, are starting to peak. This thrashed Villa. Thrashed Villa. See, this is the different Villa. Villa beat Arsenal today. City thrashed them. Thrash Palace. Guess what? Palace beat Liverpool today. Thrash Luton as well. Arsenal narrowly beat Luton. So, Man City are peaking now. They have the lead. It's in their hands now. They are six wins away from being champions. I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it. And I think it's over, in my opinion. Of course, they could drop points. Arsenal level could do it. But, in my opinion, it's over. Especially when you're looking at the fixtures. If we do have a look at the fixtures, also have a hard run in. They of course have Bayern Munich now, which that game holds a bit more weight. I, I made my predictions already. I've recorded that video for my Champions League. I might have to change it now because Arsenal going into this off the back of a loss. And knowing that this might be their only chance of silverware can be different, but they have that. Wolves away, Wolves away. Do not underestimate at home this season have beaten Man City Wolves at home this season have um, beaten who they beat they beat they beat Chelsea they've done the double over Chelsea they've done double over Spurs as well they're a good side at home especially and then they have Chelsea at home we trash but at the end of the day that's a derby that's a London derby we're going to be up for it and then North London derby straight after away from home as well they really win at Spurs as well. Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth are a good side. They are a good side. They're not a pushover. United away. Old Trafford. Arsenal rarely win there. Everton at home. Everton might be scrapping for their lives then. And then they still... Wait, what? Okay. Um, yeah, forget that. Is. <laughs> I don't know what it is about. But yeah, those are some tough, tough fixtures for Arsenal. Those are tough fixtures. Liverpool, Liverpool's fixtures as well, tough, they got the second leg versus Atlanta, I mean I think that's pretty much done, but Fulham away, Fulham always cause Liverpool problems, they've caused some problems this season multiple times, Merseyside Derby away from home, they don't have an amazing record at Goodison in terms of winning, Everton need a result in order to survive, they're going to be up for that, West Ham away, West Ham, they cause some big teams problems here and there. They might do it. Spurs at home. Spurs have already beat them this season. Villa away. We all know. I mean, just today, look at it. Villa are a fantastic side, especially at home. Wolves at home. That's a tricky game as well. So they have tricky games. Whereas you look at Man City. And now they have Real Madrid, Chelsea, you know, the semi-finals, whatever. In the league, though, Brighton away. Brighton away is a tough game, but Man City usually beat them. Nottingham Forest away. Forest are going to be battling for their lives, but at the end of the day, that's a pretty winnable game. Wolves at home, tough. They've already beat them. But at home, you would back City. Fulham away, Man City have a fantastic record against Fulham. They're probably going to win that. This is the game which may, may potentially be a slip-up. Tottenham away, they don't usually win there, but they have already won there this season. And also going off the back of that, I mean, they would have Spurs would have played Arsenal at home, and they would have played uh, Liverpool away at this point, and then they would have to go play Man City. So Spurs might have already been a bit, you know, I guess tired or run down from playing all of these big boys in a row. Maybe Man City win there, but I could see them drop. And then they have West Ham home. They always beat West Ham. They're going to win that. I think Man City are going to win all of these games. I think all six of these games. I would not be stunned. Especially one, two, three, four, five. I think minimum five wins out of six for Man City. Maybe they draw or lose that. But I don't even think that will matter. Because I don't see Arsenal winning all six. And I don't see Liverpool winning all six. So that is why for me. That is why for me, 
even though there is two points in it, this weekend was monumental and Man City have won the league or are going to win the league or are going to win the league. They are going to win the league in my opinion and the title race is over in my opinion. Now let's quickly touch on some of the other results uh, before we wrap up and we'll also talk about um, some of the other battles. So this, this result was huge in terms of Villa because Spurs lost 4-0 to Newcastle. Um, yeah, Spurs lost 4-0 to Newcastle. Isaac was fantastic in this game. He's been amazing recently. Big result for Newcastle Spurs. <laughs> they lost 6-1 there last year. 4-0 this year. They just don't like St. James's. But that's a big blow for them because Villa have won as well, meaning Villa are three points clear even though they do have a game in hand. And, crucially, with the performance of the English clubs in Europe, it looks like it might, it'll probably be a top four, it won't be a top five. So, this race has got more interesting. Spurs, I mean, we've already mentioned they have to play all three here. I think Villa are probably getting top four now. I think Villa might get top four now, but it's going to be very tight. Newcastle are over into six now because of that. Um, Brentford beat Sheffield United 2 0. Big result for Brentford. I think that pretty much secures their safety and pretty much relegates Sheffield. They're now 10 points away from Forest. Sheffield have had a bit of a renaissance recently in terms of getting draws. Um, but yeah, that result, we need to get something there. They didn't, I think they're done. I think Brentford are fine. Burnley drew with Brighton, one of the worst errors you'll see from Murich. And I think that error has simply relegated Burnley. I mean, to be fair, they are six points away. They might be able to. Again, they've had a bit of a renaissance recently, but if they had won that, they're right back in it. Drawing, not good for them. Um, and a draw, not good for Brighton. I think their race for Europe might be done. Spoke about Man City. Uh, not great for loot in that result. Um, they are one point away from safety now. After Forest drew with Wolves, a big result for Forest. But the relegation battle is looking very interesting. Everton have to play Chelsea on Monday, so we'll see what happens there. But it's really between these three teams for me, Luton, Forest, Everton. And maybe Burnley, if they can win their next game, are still in it. But yeah, um, what was the other result? Oh yeah, Bournemouth, Man United. Uh, yeah, I thought Bournemouth should have won, in my opinion. Bournemouth were way better. Man United got a bit lucky there. But... Yeah, the race for Europe is interesting. Newcastle United uh, and West Ham. And, I mean, if Chelsea can beat Everton, maybe we're in there, but I, I don't back us uh, for that. But yeah, that is my thoughts on it all. The Premier League title race for results on the weekend. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, especially if you're an Arsenal Liverpool.